those of you who have come to the forum before, we kind of do a quick review of what's happening in oil, what's happening in gas, and then we talk about some strategic themes in the oil and gas and energy uh, industries. So that's what uh, the format today uh, will be. Um, again, uh, we do all our decks in this uh, six key messages format. Uh, so, key messages from my uh, talk here, uh, oil is supply constrained essentially, there's more likelihood that oil prices will go up than it will come down unless of course there is a pretty significant uh, recession. Uh, natural gas, uh, super interesting uh, time right now, natural gas depending on how you look at it. Uh, is uh, could get uh, supply constraint in some parts of the world, that is uh, Europe. Uh, but uh, in, in the US, uh, actually natural gas is uh, demand constrained. Uh, and we are getting to the point where the existing pipeline infrastructure is going to be insufficient to uh, drive additional uh, demand growth in natural gas and therefore uh, supply growth. Um, so. Uh, you know, call your senators and ask them uh, to accelerate permitting reform. If there's one piece of legislation that will allow a North American uh, oil and natural gas industry to grow in a meaningful fashion without compromising energy transition goals, it is permitting reform today. Uh, we think that shale is in, uh, entering a very interesting period of time where it can reshape itself to be a very long-term, very cost-competitive long-term uh, player in, as, as a supplier for um, uh, oil markets, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, the last three pieces will cover energy transition markets. Um, first and foremost, we'll do a deep dive in and around the Inflation Reduction Act, which I think is going to be one of uh, the most seminal pieces of legislation in probably 50 years that will accelerate and transform energy in uh, the US. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We are doing a lot of work trying to help a wide range of stakeholders understand how, can, how they can take advantage of the different elements of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, and then, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about how we think energy transition is going to evolve in the short term, right? I think everybody has seen uh, charts and pictures of how energy transition will look like in 2030, 2040, and 2050. Uh, but if you are a technology developer or if you are uh, an EPC or if you are uh, a startup, you want to understand is there the possibility of creating a stable revenue stream here in the next few years? Uh, and, and so we'll talk a little bit about what that will look like. Uh, from, at a high level, from our perspective, uh, energy transition through the mid-2030s is essentially going to be a bunch of niche markets. Uh, there'll be a, a small but lucrative and profitable market in and around green and blue hydrogen. There'll be interesting opportunities around electrification of multiple assets. There'll be interesting CCUS and DAC projects. We'll never get to the billion tons per year that uh, some of the project developers are telling us uh, as part of our multi-client research effort on DAC, but I think there will be uh, some uh, volumes of uh, CO2 that will be captured. CCS, the traditional CCS is where we think there'll be great attraction. So I, I, I think that's the way to think about energy transition markets uh, in, in the next uh, five to 10 years. Uh, and then finally, there's a lot of capital that is flowing into energy transition. What is, uh, what we particularly watch for is, is there sufficient capital flowing to the first of a kind plans that leverage these energy transition technologies. It's one thing to go and invest $10 million in an interesting startup and a lot of that is happening. It's a totally different thing to take that technology and go build a billion dollar plant. And what we are finding is that some of that capital is actually uh, flowing and, and we are seeing capital being deployed not just for technology development, but for that first of a kind plant where there's a tremendous amount of risk associated with that uh, process and technology.